Good afternoon, everyone. This is Mike Romali here with the Hurricane Outlook and discussion for June 25th, 2022, around 2 p.m. Eastern Time. We have a lot to talk about today, including the potential for two tropical systems to be forming in the Atlantic Basin over the next several days, one in the Caribbean and one also in the Gulf of Mexico. Let's go ahead and talk about everything. Taking a wild look across the tropical Atlantic this afternoon, we noticed that besides the technical glitches here on the satellite, we noticed that we actually have a few tropical waves in the Atlantic. We have a tropical wave here. This is not 94L. We have another tropical wave behind 94L, and yep, you guessed it right here in the middle. This is Invest Area 94L, looking a little bit disheveled this afternoon, and that is kind of to be expected for the month of June. We have a lot of dry, stable air right now to the north, and that is certainly not helping, but as this moves towards the west here, this will be encountering warmer sea surface temperatures and generally more favorable conditions for tropical cyclone development. And then we will be watching this area down here in the Gulf of Mexico near Texas and Louisiana for additional development. If we take a look here at the tropical weather outlook from 8 a.m. this morning, this still stands as of 2 p.m. this afternoon. Nothing's really changed. We have this 20% area newly formed in the Gulf of Mexico region. This is including you know, Texas and Louisiana. And then we also have Invest Area 94L with a 60% chance of developing over the next five days as this moves generally westward into the Lesser Antilles, including Trinidad, Tobago, Grenada, and Barbados, and then crossing into the southern and eastern parts of the Caribbean, where after additional strengthening is certainly possible. Real quick look here, this is the system expected in the Gulf of Mexico. This will be from a mesoscale convective system, a complex of thunderstorms that will be decaying and moving south, uh, kind of southwestward uh, into the Gulf of Mexico underneath a big upper level ridge. This will be then moving again into the Gulf of Mexico where sea surface temperatures are generally warmer and there will be less shear in this area. So formation is certainly possible. I want to completely rule out this becoming a brief name storm, maybe a potential race for the name Bonnie, whether 94L or the system gets it. But again, this will be moving southwestward into the Gulf of Mexico and we'll have to talk more about that in tomorrow's discussion. So real quickly, this is the GFS forecast. Again, this is just a real quick look at the overview for the system. Again, we will have this mesoscale convective system diving down into the southwestern Gulf of Mexico, where after some additional development is possible, the 6Z GFS, the overnight run, did have a tropical storm making landfall within just about four days, four to five days, somewhere along the Texas coastline here. Again, it still remains to be seen whether or not this is going to actually develop, but that certainly remains a possibility. Switching gears here, taking a look at Invest Area 94L, we noticed that today the convective structure is overall anemic. We don't really have a lot of convection in this area, and there's a lot of dry air to the north. The one thing, however, is if we take a look at the zoomed-in visible satellite imagery, we actually notice there does seem to be a low-level circulation that has been acquired with this system. So the low-level wind field has definitely become a lot better organized since yesterday. There actually seems to be evidence of what could be a closed low-level circulation with westerly winds briefly on that southern side. Now, this won't continue to sustain itself as long as convection remains rather anemic. We need deep organized convection around this low level circulation, which actually might occur by sometime tomorrow. Now, again, look at where this is. This is just now approaching about 40 degrees west here, and we typically want to see this past about 50 degrees. So this still has a little bit more to go before we kind of reach that magic 50 west number before development is really anticipated by most models. But looking at the circulation here from the satellite, the derived wind field here, this is the 850 millibar vorticity as derived by the GOES-16 uh, GOES satellite. So the spin in the atmosphere at 5,000 feet above the ground. We notice this is Tropical Storm Celia over here. That's what we want if we're going to have a well-organized storm, a very nice rounded bundled circulation. We notice that is actually starting to occur here with 94L. We actually do have a rather sustained area of organized 
you know, bundling per se. And that has certainly kind of grown over the last several days. So this area right here, this is also a, this lead wave right here does have some energy with it as it will also be making its way into the Caribbean. Now, most models don't go to support additional development with this, but the way that we have organized convection, if we back out here and go to the overall picture here, this is that lead wave. The fact that we have organized convection with this tells us that there's a more favorable environment over here. So if we kind of look here, again, we could be seeing a system impact the Lesser Antilles over the next couple of days. Big ridge of high pressure over the southwest or really over the southeast U.S. And that will be making it pretty much difficult, uh, if not almost impossible, for this to gain much latitude over the next about five to six days. Uh, after that point, we're going to have some uncertainty. So let's go ahead and talk about that. If we look here at the GFS forecast, the 850 millibar vorticity, so again, the spin in the atmosphere at 5,000 feet above the ground. For context here, these darker oranges and reds, that is a more healthy low-level circulation that we would want to see if we were going to get a strong system. We notice that on the GFS, everything kind of remains anemic. And one of the things is that the GFS was semi-sort of right, that development uh, was not going to be quick and it would lose its convection. Now, we kind of knew this already, though. The GFS wasn't really onto something, so to speak, but it remains too anemic with convection. And that is a big problem because if you underdo the amount of convection, you're significantly underdoing the amount of spin in the atmosphere and overall genesis needed for a tropical system. So the GFS, though, still does develop something in the southwestern um you know, kind of Caribbean here, uh, kind of the central and, and southwestern part of the Caribbean towards Central America. There is a storm down in that region. The European forecast here, again, the 6Z run, so the latest run that we have so far, does go on to develop a storm or at least a depression near Trinidad, Tobago, and Barbados as it's nearing the island chain at this point. Now, the Canadian forecast, once again, the Canadian is certainly the most aggressive, but it has also now trended a lot further south in recent runs. So it's coming into more of an agreement with the GFS and Euro solutions. But if we take a look here at the ensembles for the GFS and we take a look at the ensemble mean sea level pressure at this point, it gives us a pretty good idea that we could be dealing with a cluster of possibilities here. We have a possibility that we have a storm that is a little further north towards, you know, almost kind of just south of Barbados, or it is entirely possible that this could run into land here, the far northern portions of South America that it could run into, and that could cause a lot of problems. But remember, we had this kind of same sort of path with Hurricane Matthew back in 2016, back in you know late September and into October. So this is certainly no stranger. Now if we take a look here at the upper level environment off the 6Z H wharf, this is a hurricane specific model. So in theory, it should be better with track and intensity. Although I will caution, intensity forecast for invests are certainly very wild and cannot be taken verbatim. Now, as this tracks into the Caribbean, we notice that uh, we will have a f decently favorable upper level environment, at least to begin with. We will have a displaced uh, circulation compared to the upper level anticyclone that helps to generate outflow. But generally speaking, the wind flow across here is actually pretty uniform and that results in very low shear. But we notice what's just approaching here off the top of the screen. And this is called a tropical upper trosopheric trough. It is a big upper level low in the atmosphere that creates a lot of vertical shear. We can actually see this vertical shear here. If we move this forward in time, we notice that on the model, again, we can see this wind pattern cutting across deeply like this, basically kind of this deep kind of almost U shape. And what this does is, again, this results in a lot of shear that is pretty close. And with a developing you know, storm in here, if it's already not strong as it's entering the Caribbean, and if this is just a little bit further south, this can actually result in some pretty unfavorable conditions across the Caribbean, especially down here in the kind of central and western part of the Caribbean, it could result in pretty unfavorable conditions. But the relative humidity, at least, uh, will be certainly there. But we have some dry air over here 
And with that, you know, tropical trough up here, the, the supper level low, it will be trying to induce a little bit of dry air on the western periphery here of the circulation. So certainly something to kind of keep in mind. But bottom line, it certainly looks like for the Lesser Antilles, gusty winds, mudslides, and flooding will kind of be the primary concerns over the next couple of days as Invest 94L, uh, regardless of development, will be moving into that area by mid, kind of early to mid next week. We're talking probably about Tuesday to Wednesday impacts uh, to be expected on the island. So again, bottom line, gusty winds, mudslide, and flooding will be present for the islands, especially Trinidad, Tobago, Barbados, uh, all of these southern parts of the island chain will be impacted by this in some sort of fashion. Make sure you have your hurricane preparedness plan ready. Of course, I am Michael Romali, and I'll talk to you guys again some more tomorrow.